finished a bit of a shitty, dirty job, as you can see. On the way back, stopped at the scrapyard. Picked up uh, most of the ingredients I need to make the rocket stove stroke heater. Here it goes. Marked out the barrel for the exhaust side of the chimney, which is basically a hole near the base. Uh, it's going to exhaust. I'll explain in more detail, but basically it's going to exhaust from the base. I'm going to cut the hole slightly smaller than I need and then just tease it over with a hammer, make it a nice tight fit. Sometimes you get them as tight that you don't even weld them, but I'll probably weld this in, like, seeing as it's first time doing this. I don't want the thing to fold a bit. Beautifully crafted exhaust. To clean that up and weld it in, but as I've been using it to hold 200 litres of red diesel, there's still a little bit in there, so I'll probably just cut the top off uh, and mop the diesel out because I don't want the thing exploding. I'm trying to cut a six inch pipe <laughs> at a 45 degree angle so it can be twisted into a 90 has got my poor little brain done in, but I've managed it <clears throat> just using the grinder because the, the hobby hacksaw just ain't big enough. So weld it together, stick it in. All right, slowly taking shape. This is going to be the feed pipe. Basically there'll be a box on here for stuffing your fuel in. And the theory is it goes down along up, up through here. Now this pipe will get cut off exactly two inches below the top and then it'll be capped off so there'll just be an air gap there so that it comes up around and it's going to be forced down and then out of the chimney it comes up here so you can see it's sort of going burn the fuel smoke comes out goes up over around here and then out the chimney but also we'll add a small pipe inside here halfway up with little pinholes with the end blocked, that pipe will just sit halfway up this tube and come out back through the fire into fresh air. And that gives it a secondary burn because it can draw more oxygen halfway up the chimney, making this thing a lot more efficient. So basically now, cut this off two inches below the top, trim the top off that, weld the top back on there. Obviously put a few bits of supports in here, get rid of that block of wood. I'll probably fill the bottom with sand that's pretty much job done. Simple as that. Right, I've chopped the top off the barrel, made it slightly shorter. And when I was cutting the top off, that rail came off. I didn't really want to do that, I suppose I welded back on. Um, the reason we made it a touch shorter is, as I've read on the internet, and everything on the internet is totally true, Apparently they're a little bit more efficient if they're a little bit shorter than a full barrel. But 
we'll see. I'm just experimenting with it, making it up as I go along. I've watched all the YouTube videos about this. <laughs> a lot of American redneck ones are brilliant, but you know, a lot of expert guys, a lot of these have been refined and put in houses and work really well. They're almost like an incinerator, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> I'm probably still not entirely digging the stainless steel. It's a double wall pipe with insulation in the middle. I'm not entirely sure what that insulation is. Could be asbestos, I don't know. It came out of the old kitchen, right? Hence wearing a mask in a very ventilated area. And I'll probably wet. Down as well to keep any dust down. Safety first, kids. Right, panic it over, it wasn't um, asbestos, it was rock wool, fiberglass shit, which is bad enough to breathe in, so hose the whole place down, job done. Uh, that's the burn pipe done. Cut it to a 45, twisted it round well together to get a 90. Added in the insulated bit, all welded up, ready to go back in, clean up the barrel, weld the exhaust in. Well, the in, in, in box, well, the in box in, in box, I don't know, uh, fire box. Fire box sits slightly lower than the exhaust. I don't know if you can see that was the center line. Sorry, that's the center line there, coming around here. See how it sits quite, just a little bit higher, <clears throat> just so I can fill this bit up, sort of half full of sand and the pipe can lie in the sand, insulating it. Insulating the bottom of the barrel that started burning out so quick, they will burn out in time. Yeah. The burn box almost welded on. A uh, bit more to do. Right, got an old trolley. Cut it up, welded it to sort of the right size, just so it can stick this fire on, well, move it around until we find a permanent base for it. But slowly getting there, slowly getting there. Firebox all done last night, with a door so it can clean the thing out. Trolley with wheels all made. Uh, fire door there for cleaning out the fire entrance, whatever you call it, tacked in place so we can move the thing about if need be, till it finds a permanent place. Yeah, it's starting to look like something. Just got to cap the top of it, uh, drop some sand in, insulate the bottom. Better clean some of that diesel out of there, or that could end up in disaster. <clears throat> Bit of sand just insulated up to the exhaust over the bottom of the intake. Uh, cap it. Put the chimney on, bracket, um, catch to keep that up. This thing's re almost ready to fire up. Right, that's the sand packed into the bottom, just below the exit chimney. It's basically a, 
a byproduct of my wet blasting business. We use fine, very fine crushed glass, blast it against a building just to clean it or remove paint. And this is what's left over. It just goes back to its base form of sand, I guess. And most of that is off a red brick building, hence it being red in color. <laughs> right, that's the top welded back on. Not the prettiest of jobs, <laughs> mainly because I cut the top off wrong. I cut the blooming lip off with it. I should have left the lip with the top. Plus all the heat that's got into welding the box on has distorted the turn and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I'll tidy it up with the grinder. It'll be good to go. No doubt I'll be revisiting it with a welder. Uh, see what leaks we've got. Any smoke coming out of there needs to be addressed and make that completely airtight for the thing to work efficiently. Stevenson's rocket. <laughs> That's the chimney home. <laughs> I know it's slight overkill, but I reckon the longer the flue you've got, the better it'll draw through. It's maybe it's a bit of overkill, but looks silly. I like it. But it actually, you can just give it a twist and break it in half. So we'll see how it goes like that. Just added the support to it. Um, got this stainless steel flue. Uh, insulated stuff, 20 quid from the scrapyard for that, that, all I used inside, all of that lot. So ha happy days with that. So really, apart from, you know, welding gas consumables, this thing's cost me 20 quid. Uh, just got to make a latch for the front and then I can set it on fire. So, see you in hospital. <laughs> My God, we have smoke coming out the chimney. Now, once it gets going and gets super heated, that smoke should uh, disappear. Now, this should all not be burning up over, it should be drawing through. So I've got it choked a bit with a bit of cardboard. We'll just see how it goes. You should be able to see there now, it's drawing through into the barrel. It's still a bit coming out the burn box, but it, it's getting there, like. Right? It's starting to draw everything through and heat the barrel. A little bit of a blue haze coming off that, but like I say, once the thing gets superheated, <laughs> oh, it's got to burn all the paints as well. The majority of the heat's hitting here now. Fuck, oh, can I touch that now? But basically, this burn will take all the paint off it. Maybe he's going to have to make a door for the top of this burn box. Slowly pulling it through. I'll maybe just put a couple of channels, one there and one there, so it's fed straight into that hole. You can hear the draw on it now. Happy days. This thing works. I can't believe it. Well, almost. <coughs> Took a bit of getting going because everything's so wet, but it, like I say, it shouldn't be flaming out the front like that. I need to modify that. But it's getting hot, you can see it's burning the paint off and drying that wood out. So it's getting there, right? The, the heat haze is starting to get quite hot. It's getting less smoky at the top. Woo, nice wheels. Transit van clutch. Hey. Uh, decided to make a few modifications. What I've done in here is made the hopper sort of more like a hopper than just a box. I'm welding a couple of heavy steel plates in the bottom and I'll drill holes through. And pull this wood out, that'll give it like an air supply underneath. Fill this up with sand and cement to get rid of that void. Insulate it a bit. Just, you know, make it up as a go along as usual. Um, just using stuff that's lying around the workshop. I was a bit concerned it wasn't run as well as it should. I mean, that was probably part of the problem. But I also cut the top off and it dawned on me that because when I welded this in it, it sunk down a bit. My air gap would obviously shrunk and it has, it's only about half an inch. So basically I'm going to trim that pipe down, give it more of an air gap between the pipe and the top, weld that back down. And I forgot to put the secondary oxygen pipe in, burn pipe, so I'll do that now before I put it back together. Happy days. Right, that's it. All installed. Complete. Working. Got the flue up and out of the building. It's 
drawn like mad. We just lit it there. Incredible. Yeah. Drawn through, no problem. Happy days. Thank you.